It's with um, Mike Williams. Mm -hmm. Where are you seeing him grow the most as a player? Um, well, I'm kind of brand new with them, so hard to compare it a lot to the past. But, um, you know, I think I see what a lot of people see, you know, just a, a big physical receiver with good hands. Um, it's got great uh, ball skills, um, can track the ball, high point the ball, win those contested catches. Um, I've been impressed just, you know, he doesn't, he's not a real animated guy. And, uh, but, man, I can't think of one mental error he's had, you know, through training camp. So, obviously, a smart guy who studies and, uh, you know, does the right thing. So, um, just all around, really, really pleased with him. Oh, yeah. What did you take away from that performance and kind of remember that for the Chargers? Yeah, I mean, I remember the one up the left sideline where Justin just threw a bullet and he jumped up and caught it. And, uh, you know, there's not a lot of guys that can do that. So, um, you know, it's uh, – you had experience with, with someone who could do that kind of thing with Mike Williams, and so there's a lot of similarities. Um, did I say Mike, Mike, Michael Thomas, excuse me? But um, yeah, it's just a special player and a, a nice tool to have, knowing that um, you know if they're going to single him up, you you have a winner almost always. How impressive have you been with, I mean, you, sometimes Justin hikes the ball right away and he throws it to Mike, mm -hmm. and Mike's able to create what it looks like to be a three yard reception into 10 or 15 because. He's able to stiff arm. He's so big. He's not able to be brought down so quickly. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. It's a uh, great to have players like that that you can make. You know, whether it's an RPO where you know I'm not sure when the ball snapped, whether we're running or throwing it, or a called quick game uh, that really good. You know, it's a very high percentage pass. It's a very low risk play that can turn into big yards because of just the the physical abilities of those guys. So there's a. Uh, not, you know, not every coach has that, that player on his team that he can rely on to, to do those kinds of things. So it's a, it's a nice luxury. How, how similar are uh, Michael Thomas and Mike Williams? Um, Mike Williams is a little bigger. Um, you know, they're both really competitive. Um, both have good hands. So there's a lot of similarities, really. Um, Michael Thomas is probably a little more animated, uh, a little more emotional. But um, you know, both both really good players. I mean, there's you you could say that there's a lot of similarities to them as far as how you would use them as an offensive coach. And how soon after you took this job, or even maybe before you took this job, did you know that you wanted to put Mike in that spot? I think pretty much right away. Yeah. You just saw the similarities, um, and so knew that there were things uh, that that he would really be good at that we could put him in a position to do, and. Uh, you know, so far it's paid off. The way, uh, sorry. Just the, the way you guys um, run block in the fourth quarter there, mm -hmm. got things going. Did you feel like you're starting to see sort of the synergy develop there on the offensive line in terms of the run blocking? Yeah, I think it was great. And, uh, you know, we had those three runs in a row that, uh, you know, got us down in the red zone. We ended up uh, kicking a field goal on that drive. But, um, yeah, you just, you know, and the run game's like that sometimes. It's, it's you got to keep pounding the rock where, that first quarter can be frustrating sometimes, but you wear them down, you keep at it, loosen them up a little bit with the passing game, and uh, you know those yards will come. So you know part of it is as a play caller having that patience and that trust and knowing that those guys are going to get those yards when it counts. So, um, but yeah, I think uh, I think it's coming along with those guys. What have, what have you seen on film from Jonathan Abram, and kind of what are some of the things that he presents? The Troubles that he presents with him being a young safety and aggressive. Yeah, very talented, uh, down near the ball a lot. Um, and so, uh, you know, just a guy that's that's physical, supports the run, athletic, you know, so still uh, a lot of times when I hear box safety, you think a guy's a liability in the passing game, but uh, he's an all-around player. And, um, you know, someone that you're going to have to keep your eye on, know where he is. Joe, last, uh, last week on Sunday, when that long pass to Jalen Guyton, he basically dropped that pass. Was it a little frustrating? Did you talk to him about it, about having to make that play? I mean, you guys would have been up 21-0. Oh, yeah, you, you wish he would. I think Sorensen made a nice play on it and kind of – but I think Jalen believes and we believe that he'll make that play if he was put in that position again. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, to say I'm frustrated, no, I, I know what kind of player he is and, and not every play is going to be an A-plus, but uh, – um, you know, I was more wanting him to hurry back after that play, so we – 
had more time on the clock when we were calling the fourth down play. So that's what I was more frustrated with. But uh, with the illegal shifts, yeah. Uh, what have you guys kind of done this week to kind of maybe improve on that and not get eight calls the way you kind of have been consistent? Yeah, I think just honing in on the details and and um, you know really emphasizing and practicing the substitutions. You know, getting in and out, on and off, making sure I'm getting the play calls in on time. And uh, so that we're not, you know, a couple of those have been, I think Justin's felt hurried up against the clock. Um, and, 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 you know, against Dallas, maybe the play call came in late um, this past Sunday, just getting in and out of the huddle and, and guys having a little bit more urgency when, that, when that's on the line. And maybe just not shifting and motioning so much when we're in the tight red zone so, so we don't run into those problems. But just being more detailed, more urgent, um, you know, all, all across the board, communication, all those things. Going through your mind when you saw Justin make that throw to Jalen, the one that he did drop, it just oh. rolling to his left in the wind, like 50 yeah. Points. I mean, yeah, you know, I don't want to say I'm spoiled or anything, but we've seen a lot of those kinds of throws. So I mean, if if you uh, if you see him in a position and someone open, I never think, oh, it's too deep. This guy's too far away for him to make the throw. So yeah, it. You know, when when you first looked up, you thought, well, this is going to be a sure touchdown, and, and Sorensen really did make a good play on it, and uh, but. Uh, yeah, I was I was I was super excited for a moment there. Yeah, I think just uh, getting in a groove with the process. Uh, you know, he's a perfectionist, and and early on in the week, and it, it happened with Drew, where there's just a lot of information coming at you. You know, on a Tuesday and a Wednesday, and there's stress involved with that. You know, I've got to learn. <laughs> all the new plays and I'll have to learn the defense and there's just a lot of information and and just grooving in that process where I, I can see that his comfort level even from week one to now you know he trusts the process he knows that uh, he might not see the total picture Wednesday morning but by by Friday afternoon he's going to have it all down and so just that confidence and uh, trust in the process and going through that has been uh, what I've seen the, the, the biggest improvement on. About the Raiders' defensive line and kind of what they present again, or they're going to present on, on uh, Monday. Yeah, uh, you know, big strong nose guard that you're uh, going to have to battle in the run game. Um, two edge rushers, uh, really three, because because you know Nassib's always been a guy that's. Uh, been effective against us at least when I was in New Orleans. So um, you know, their three ends are uh, all guys that you have to pay attention to from a pass blocking perspective and. Um, you know, Marinelli has always been an, a defensive coach that you, we've had such great respect. These guys play so hard, and they're disruptive and um, technically sound and, and, and all those things. And so, yeah, it's going to be an all-day affair for, the, for our O-line. What's it like kind of collaborating with maybe Keenan Mike, some of these guys who have gone up against Gus Bradley's defense in the past? Have sure. The yeah, I think they have a, a good feel, you know, when – you're describing the defense and you're saying, hey, this player, this is his responsibility. They, they've, they've heard that a million times at this point. So they've got a good familiarity. And some of the players on the other side, you know, that came from here. Um, and, you know, this defense has been around the NFL for a while. And Atlanta ran a version of it. Um, but I've, I've always thought that Gus was, uh, you know, I don't know if he was the founder or the godfather of this defense. But I've always felt like he's, he's one of the best at coaching it. So certainly. Uh, it's not complicated, but they execute so well, and it's uh, it can be challenging to to attack. It's kind of a unique situation just because so many of these defensive players on the team now played in that scheme. Is it a situation where you like Gus is going to run what he runs, or do you sort of think that because so like this team is so familiar, these players are so familiar with the scheme that you might see more wrinkles? Like how does that? How do you how do you sort of? Approach I think that? he always does a good job of game planning for the opponent, you know, and so it's. Um, yeah, I do expect a few wrinkles, specifically maybe on third down. Um, but this defense has been around a long time. It's been proven. Um, yeah, I don't think they're ever really trying to trick you. They're, they're just trying to out-execute you, and they often do a really good job of that. So um, you're always ready for the unknowns, but uh, or you're pr trying to be ready for the unknowns. And uh, But I, I think he's going to lean on what they do well. How do you feel about the run game so far in the first three games of the season? Um, I think it's been, uh, I mean, it's been efficient in, in, in critical times, you know, like in the fourth quarter against Kansas City. Um, 
I think as a play caller, especially when you kind of come from a pass perspective, you know, a run goes for one yard, you're always angry about it. And, and so you just have to train yourself to be a little more patient. But uh, um, I think it's coming along. I think Austin's doing a great job running the football um, and all those guys and, and the O-line's blocking them up. And you know, Frank Smith does a great job with this game, uh, getting that run game together for us with uh, Sean Serrett. So uh, I think it's coming along and I think it's, it's you know, it's hard when you have Justin and Mike and Keenan. To, we're, we're running the ball here. You know, it's, they're, they're just so good, and you get so tempted to throw the ball. But um, something that's important uh, to be able to establish that, and uh, it's, I'm, I'm pleased with it. Do you feel like Sunday was maybe a step forward for the scheme and the players within the scheme? Just, there seemed like there were a lot of wide-open throws. Like, Austin was wide open on the touchdown. Yeah. Keenan's motion. No, I, well, I mean, as far as throwing the ball, I, I felt felt like we've been pretty effective all three weeks. Um, so I think the execution's been good. Some of that is just uh, the defense makes a mistake. You know, you'd love to take credit for that, but you know, sometimes the defense busts, and maybe some of the shifts or motions you did uh, created that, or the tempo that we played with created that. So uh, you know, every week's a new game. Um, but I think these guys are honed in. I think they're 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 understanding what we're trying to do. And uh, Justin is playing with great rhythm and timing. And when the play breaks down, he can do uh, great things outside of structure too. So um, you know, I was happy with the results of Sunday and a lot of things we need to improve on. But I, I like where we're trending. Um, and then on the two point conversion, was the call to go to Mike, or was it just that he was? He was wide open over there, not covering there was there was a combination route, and uh, but no one was covering him, so he just kind of made eye contact with Justin, and uh, Justin threw it to him, and he caught it. So yeah, they just they never got lined up over him. So you know, we thought maybe it would go to uh, Keenan, but we, there was a whole progression that wasn't supposed to be involved with that play, and you know they just didn't cover, so we just threw it to the uncovered guy. Didn't make it too complicated. Um, yeah, I think they were, they were, uh, they might have been trying to let us score anyway. I think if we handed it off, we might have just walked in anyway. So, you know, in retrospect, um, you know, probably, hey, let's get this clock down, try to score a touchdown just to take any risk, but try to score a touchdown with, you know, 15 seconds left. So maybe run, tell a running back, don't score. If, if they're going to let you, don't score and uh, kick a field goal with, you know, five seconds left if it comes down to that, but hopefully score a touchdown before that. So, um, yeah, it was more of a uh, built in, you know, and you know, I need to remember that, you know, he's not in his 20th year, he's in his second year. And so if I had that, I'd, be, I'd say, hey, I want to hand it off here. You know, sometimes you've got to run and it's got a, a route built in and I've got to remember to remind them of certain things that maybe I take for granted that, uh, you know, but I, he gets pretty aggressive on game day. He might not have listened to me. So, could you could you call that play like without? The team? Yeah, no, you could, like, you could okay. totally. Yeah, you could. When that happened, you're, 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 I imagine you looked at the clock right away to see how much time. Was yeah. Did you feel like? Oh, yeah, I, when when I saw him throw it, I was like, no, all right, good. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, there was some comfort that they had to score a touchdown over a field goal. But yeah, I was like, ah, I wish we would have left less time on the clock for sure. In a situation like that, you would you would call though to not score like in that yeah that happens that sometimes just, yeah. yeah yeah I mean a lot of times if the conditions were different you probably would be taking a knee and running the clock down you know but that wind was howling it was a tough day and so we're like well let's let's score a touchdown and so you know second level thinking would have been hey let's get down there as close as we can run the clock out then score and if you don't score. We had plenty of timeouts, burn one and kick a 20 yard field goal or whatever it would have been. The fourth and four, where Justin found Keenan early in the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. um, it looked like Jalen was wide open. Yeah. Um, were you okay with the decision? Just because of the yeah, well, I, I always say that uh, some of those iffy things, I was like, yeah, hey, the good thing about being as a coach, I can tell you how you did after the play, right? So if they would have, but yeah, I think. Keenan's won in the progression, but there's always this awareness of, uh, you know, because Jalen was kind of running uh, what we call an eliminate. He's trying to 
pull the inside coverage in, and so you always want to be aware if they drop them to plug it on them. And so um, it's a good lesson learned, you know, not a play that we've run five million times. So I think next time he'll he would have thrown it to, to Jalen. But uh, sometimes in those critical situations, you get such trust in certain players, and you're just I'm throwing to this guy because I know he's going to make the play. And so players, not plays, is often you know a more important way to think about the game and. Uh, you know, he got it done. Both those guys did. I'm sort of what I was getting at, like, you'd rather have your best receiver. Yeah, and it, listen, I trust Jalen, and I'm, it would have been great if he would have thrown it to him and, and everything, everyone would have been happy. He would have caught it, all those things. But, you know, in those critical situations, you're, you know, you're, you're trying to find the, the superhero that you know is going to make the play for you, and Keenan's proven that over a number of years. Superhero or magician? Uh, all of it, yeah. <laughs> all of it.